Now we're going to take a look at the Neolithic Revolution, which is the game changer in human history. It takes us from being those hunter and gatherers that we saw previously uh, that traveled around the world to uh, sedentary peoples that are able to uh, develop all of the things that we have today. And so this begins about 12,000 years ago, uh, and, or actually a little bit later than that, 12, 13, or 14,000 years ago in 12,000, 10,000 BCE. And this is uh, a revolution that is not kind of a political revolution or what you might think of new, normally when you hear revolution, but it is a revolution in how we get our food. Um, this revolution allows us, or in this revolution, what we do is we domesticate animals and plants. And so uh, we purposely grow crops like rice and wheat and and rye and barley and corn and pumpkins and grapes and whatever other crops, your food that you want to think of, we begin to develop those and, and uh, purposely grow them and grow them to our tasting and liking. And then we also domesticate animals by herding wild animals and getting them used to us, uh, using wolves and making them dogs, uh, making cats, all those things um, we use. And so this allows us to farm and this allows us to practice something called animal husbandry where we uh, raise animals to then kill them for their food or uh, use them for their milk or whatever other products they can give us. And uh, again, this revolution began about 12,000 years ago, 14,000 years ago, but we don't really actually know why it happened, uh, whether it was by accident uh, and that they just left some food on the ground and they realized that, hey, it grew later in that year, or whether it was uh, purposely done by women or if women started this because they were the hunter and gatherers, or if it was uh, developed because of a food crisis that we were going through since this was at the end of the Ice Age um, and we needed new sources of food because the normal sources of food in the human population were growing uh, beyond what the environments could control or could uh, allow. And so we developed this agriculture and it happens around major rivers. Uh, it, it doesn't just happen anywhere. It has to be around a good source of water. And so we can see uh, in this top map here, all those green areas are where agriculture begins. And so we can see it in the Middle East around what we're going to call the Fertile Crescent. Uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa, it spreads. Uh, in China, um, around the Huanghe River, uh, on the east coast of South America, in Central America, around the Mississippi in the U.S. These are the regions where it develops. And you can see um, on this bottom left map that uh, in those orange areas, that's where it develops originally. And, and then you can see the yellow areas where today it's the most... Um, uh, most productive agricultural lands of the world uh, today. And uh, there's a little bit of a change here now because of uh, how the environment was treated during this time. Like the Fertile Crescent might still be a very fertile region, but because of the environmental damage done to it, which we'll talk about later, uh, leads it to not be one of the most productive areas. And now we look at it as kind of a desert, uh, when originally it wasn't like a desert. Uh, but you can see China was one of the early starters, and they are still a major player of the U.S. around the Mississippi, here in Iowa. Um, we are part of that major producer uh, and, and founders of agriculture. And this will lead to the first civilizations, which we'll talk more about uh, later. Um, but you have groups like the Olmecs, the Egyptians, the Sumerians, the uh, people of the Indus River and the Yellow River, the uh, Shang China. And so you had these civilizations that are able to develop because of this farming. Now, uh, we kind of already just went over these regions, but in Eurasia, uh, that is kind of, um, we're going to include Egypt there, Mesopotamia, the Indus Valley, uh, the Huanghe River, or the Yellow River in China. Uh, this is where uh, agriculture takes over the greatest and has the greatest impact because they have a lot of large animals. Think cows, pigs, goats, sheep, chickens, all those things. And they have some of the best crops in wheat and rye and barley uh, that allow for large populations. And so this is where it's best uh, throughout Europe, uh, North Africa, the Middle East, uh, Asia and South Asia and East Asia. This is where it takes over the best. And then um, south of Saharan Desert in Africa, uh, we have the spread of agriculture as well, as well as ironworking and the Bantu language by the Bantu peoples uh, from Western Africa. Uh, and so they spread it around. And this is Make sure you make note of this and remember this because 
these, these people will come up over and over again in how they influence sub-Saharan Africa. And so the Bantu people uh, developed during this time period, this early time period of agriculture and spread it. And uh, their, their language is still around today through the modern languages that are there in sub-Saharan Africa. And then, in the, whoops, my bad there. In the Americas, we have agriculture take over, but it doesn't develop as well because the Americas don't have large animals. What we have kind of for our large animals that we can domesticate are alpacas and llamas, and they can't carry much. They look cute, and they make great uh, clothing, but they don't, they don't help us in a lot of ways. Uh, because of uh, they just can't carry a lot and the plants that we have develop a lot slower like corn uh, Corn started out very small. It was not the modern corn that you might think of today and Then uh, so that leads to a kind of a slow process in the Americas and why not everyone follows it in the Americas and then in Oceania uh, It allows that exploration. So they need to have uh, Agriculture first to then allow them to go and explore the rest of the world um, and so these are the major regions, and the first region would be that uh, Mesopotamia here, the Fertile Crescent, which will be, which will also kind of include Egypt as well with the Nile River. Uh, but that's kind of the first area. So if you remember the first area, it's Mesopotamia, and then other areas around the same time develop it. Okay, and the effects of this are um, huge. First, it allows the creation of civilizations like we uh, discussed briefly earlier. Civilizations like Egypt and Sumerian and Babylon and the Indus and and the Chinese civilizations with the Shang and the uh, the later Qin and Chao dynasties and all those. Um, it allows uh, for culture to develop uh, the cultures that make these civilizations unique and their languages to be developed and spread and also to develop greater and greater technology because we have people that can sit around and develop things uh, instead of everyone having to run around and be good at everything. Um, some of the more negative things for culture, though, is uh, we begin to have social hierarchies developed. Sorry, that should say beginning of social hierarchy there. Uh, but um, you can see that with the pyramid. That's an example of Egypt. But we have that kind of happen throughout the world. Uh, also, we have ladies uh, losing their equality to men that we saw as hunter-gatherers, as nomadic peoples, they lose that in a lot of societies, especially the, the farming and sedentary societies. And um, this doesn't happen right away. This is a slow process. But you can see today it's been a slow process to transition out of that as well and that women are just starting to become more and more equal to men, uh, even though maybe they should have been equal all along. And then, um, then we have major conflicts that will develop out of this is there are, there are two types of farming that develop. There's one, the farming that you think of with uh, planting crops and sitting there around the fertile areas. And then there's pastoralism, which is that animal husbandry where we uh, have animals that we raise and we migrate around. We're nomadic. And uh, both these groups are going to fight over the best lands. And this will be a conflict that lasts until, uh, until really the Mongols, and after the Mongols are done with their... Um, conquests, uh, pastoralism kind of starts to die out or loses their power. Uh, but this is, this is a conflict that will last for a long, long time in human history. And then uh, the last part is that environmental damage that we've done. Um, because of this, we were able to change the environment, but at the same time, when we do that, we start to destroy the environment. Uh, we have more erosion that happens, which means that topsoil goes away, which leads to salinization of the soil, and that leads to poor environments to grow crops and with that we can't grow them anymore and that's what we see kind of in the Middle East with all the desert. It originally wasn't like that. It was a very fertile area but we ruined the ground and so uh, that's the environmental damage that we have going on there. And so looking at some of those, these are the very basics of this. We're going to see this and this is going to be something we'll talk about throughout the year but looking at those causes and effects there uh, was this a net good thing for human history or was this a negative thing for human history? 